Rest in peace, victims, but here we go. <laughs> pressed to think of a more foolish thing to do at the scene of a crime that you just committed. I love his accent already. ID behind. Aside oh, from no. just staying there and waiting for the police oh, to show see. up, this is about the worst thing you could conceivably do if you actually wanted to get away with your crime. <laughs> Bafflingly, this is exactly what Peter Goebbels did. Pete! Goebbels was a serial killer and rapist <gasps> in Germany in the mid-1980s. <laughs> police were building a case Salt of the earth. already linked together four oh, separate fun. crimes when Goebbels left the scene of his most recent crime, dropping his ID card behind him. Despite claiming that he was sick in the head, he ended <laughs> yeah. up getting life mm. in prison. You know, that's what they do. They're, they're not smart. Your adrenaline's pumping and it clouds your judgment. You're not thinking, you have tunnel vision. And so they leave things behind or they forget that they're wearing their high school football jersey with their name on the back of the shirt. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes I feel like in those situations, it's like karma, like it's meant to be. Like he's off to rape and murder and he's like, ooh, I better grab my wallet. I don't want to forget my ID. What if I get pulled over? <laughs> I don't want that on my record. When the body of Russell Hammond was discovered, aged 49, oh. the two main suspects blamed each other for his death. Gareth Giles and Christopher Coulter both claimed they'd walked in on each other strangling Hammond. However, <laughs> Giles' lies quickly fell apart uh -oh. when police found a meticulous 18-point step-by-step plan for murder, which he hadn't even deleted from okay. his computer. Okay, step one, um, kill him. Okay, step two, Blame Bob. Okay. <laughs> it also emerged that Giles had discussed with a friend of his what it would be like to kill a totally innocent person. The list, titled The Advocate Document, included steps such as tying Vic up with rope and duct tape and burn or drown oh Vic's car. My God. With Coulter actually working as his accomplice, oh Giles had implemented 13 of the steps. In 2014, the pair were jailed for 25 years each. How about, you know what? The last step on that should have been delete this file. <laughs> just the common sense to like not even delete it. I think it's just a lot, like really, they have a lot of confidence in themselves. Like he was probably, oh, I don't need to delete this. Nobody's gonna find it. I'll get away with it. From 1976 to 1977, one man's killing spree would bring the city of New York to a complete standstill. All really? Told, Everybody just stood still? He attacked eight times, wounding seven people and killing six. This is how a $25 parking ticket brought down the son of Sam. <gasps> the killer had used a 44 oh. caliber Charter Arms Bulldog oh, revolver in each Sam. of his previous five attacks. Attacks that had many oh. other similarities. Several of his oh. victims had shoulder length dark oh. hair and were shot while sitting in their cars late at night, many of them couples. Okay. But then in the late night hours of July 31st, 1977, Stacy Moskowitz and Robert Violanti, both 20 Great years names. old, were sitting in Violanti's car. But that very night, Cecilia Davis was walking her dog Snowball, Snowball around that same Brooklyn neighborhood. A man had creeped past her holding what she thought might be a gun. Moments oh, later, terrifying. gunshots rang out. Terrifying. Davis noticed that two officers had been handing so out parking was tickets gun. on the night of the murder. And one of those parking tickets had been given by officers Jeffrey Logan and Michael Cantoneo to a 1970 Ford Galaxy for parking too close to a fire hydrant. Detective James Justice investigated the ticket and found that the car was registered to a house in Yonkers, 30 miles away from Brooklyn. The car belonged to a 24-year-old postal worker named David Berkowitz. <laughs> that's what you get for that. <laughs> but that's literally how parking tickets are. They're evil, they'll get you. You know, if you have crimes, your parking tickets will know. And if you don't pay your parking tickets, it's a crime. That happens all the time. My sergeant I currently work for, he did a traffic stop and pulled over Richard Ramirez, the night stalker, uh, for a DUI and actually booked him the night uh, before. And then he got released and then killed again and things like that. But because that booking, that they were able to link him. When on the run from a murder charge, you would probably think twice before appearing as a contestant Stop. on a popular TV show. <laughs> Chinese murderer Wu Gang didn't quite follow this thought process. In 2011, he starred as an eligible bachelor on dating show Happy no. Lee under the name Somebody Liu House. Somebody else, some other serial killer in the 60s was on the dating game. Number one, that's your number one, all right. Blind viewer recognized Gang as the prime suspect from a well publicized 1990s That's murder terrifying. investigation who had disappeared without a trace. <laughs> the viewer contacted the police, who subsequently reopened the case. Detectives determined that Gang and Howe were indeed the same person. 
and he was charged with the stabbing Jesus of a man at the restaurant in Gilead. That is the funniest thing. They, they don't think of the world outside of their own purview. You know what I mean? So, just like, oh, I'm just going on a dating show. No one's gonna recognize me. So your face is already on TV, and then you're like, it's all right, change the name. Doesn't matter, we're good. I'm not gonna be caught, you know? He terrorized a Kansas community for Ooh, decades. BTK. A serial killer who called that himself guy. BTK. BTK. Bind, I love a good BLT. <gasps> on bind, torture, kill. <sighs> am I, am I? Yes, just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. In 2004, the Wichita Eagle newspaper wrote an article about how the killer was likely dead or in prison since he hadn't been heard from for so long. Raider read this and became annoyed. He wrote a letter to the paper taking credit for a 1986 murder and then continued to send a number of letters as mm -hmm. well as puzzles well, and show you. to the media. Raider got caught oh up in God. his own smug desire to take credit. In 2005, he sent a message to the local TV channel referencing a package that he had left at a nearby home depot. In Inside the package were plans for murders and a question. Raider wanted to know if a floppy disk that he sent to the police could be traced. He then asked them to answer him by placing an ad in the classified section of the local newspaper. <laughs> an honest answer. So the police placed an ad saying that using a floppy disk would be fine because they are untraceable, and Raider okay. saved the file to a floppy disk and put it where the police couldn't find it, confident they wouldn't be able to okay, trace well, him. That's they then, of course, used it to trace him, discovering that Raider had actually used his own name to create the files and had printed them out from his church's computer. He's currently serving 10 consecutive life sentences. Oh my gosh, you expect more from the big ones, right? You expect a little more. Oh my God, that is literally the dumbest thing. He, you're asking the police, hey, can you trace this? And they're like, yeah. no. <laughs> and he's like, good. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why would they tell you? You know, they all secretly kind of want to get caught. That's just how they are. You know, they're just so, like, in their own head. Dot, he met his first young victim in a pub on December 29th, 1978, and invited like him that. home, no. as he had on previous occasions. No. The next morning, overcome by a desire to prevent the young man from leaving, he strangled him. Oh! Nielsen continued his killing spree, storing the bodies of over 12 men all around his apartment. He would carry the decomposed bodies to his garden and bury their limbs. Oof. In 1982, in a desperate attempt to stifle his homicidal behavior, Nielsen moved into a top floor apartment, which had no garden and no convenient floorboards. <laughs> Still unable to quell his impulses, a further three victims were killed in this apartment, and presented Oof. Nielsen with much greater disposal challenges, given the apartment's lack of yeah. direct access outdoor space. He overcame these obstacles by dissecting the bodies into small pieces that could be flushed down the toilet. This quickly became a problem, clogging the drains for the entire building. Once it was discovered that human remains caused the blockage, investigators quickly flushed Nielsen out. That was a funny little pun that they did at the bottom. I mean, that just shows you like how twisted their brain is to be like, I really want to stop killing. I got to move. Like he really thought he could flush down bones. Like, what are you doing? And also like, imagine like literally like staring at somebody's body part, leg, arm, whatever. <laughs> When 22-year-old Jamie Fraley went missing, police were interested in speaking to a man named Ricky Simmons Sr. about her disappearance. Jamie's mother believed that this Simmons was definitely knew the 90s. what happened to her daughter, as the 49-year-old man was the last person to see her alive, as far as anyone knew. He was a person of interest, and very likely would have been questioned by the police regarding Fraley's disappearance. However, Simmons threw a wrench into the works. Before Simmons could be questioned regarding the disappearance, he was found dead in the uh. trunk of a car. Why did like that? It sounds like perhaps somebody had killed him to cover up a bigger crime, but that's not actually what seems to have happened. The trunk Simmons was found in belonged to his ex-girlfriend. She was the one who discovered him there and was as surprised as anyone. As far as the police were able to figure out, Simmons had actually hidden in the trunk with the intention of killing his ex-girlfriend. However, he got locked inside and oh, died Oh, he killed the himself. No. So he's the reason why there's that safety latch in the trunk. Instant karma. Mm-hmm. This episode is over. Yeah. <laughs> like I hate the other part that I hate is I'm like I'm mad as hell that you 
got killed by somebody that dumb. Like, what the hell, man? I don't know, they're all really dumb. I mean, maybe the, the last one in the car was kind of the dumbest. What were the other seven stabs? Oh, blame Chuck. 